Hi everyone, it's Rosemary with Enchanting Rosemary Sewing and Embroidery and as you can see we are back in PE Design Brother Software. I promised that every week or so we would do a little bit on the PE Design Software so this is the week that we're going to do it and what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on a little bit of a project that I'm going to do in a class. In a couple of months here I'm going to teach my embroidery club at my work and we're going to make a table runner. And I know that a couple of months ago, well, it seems like just a couple of months ago, we did a, a Halloween table runner, but I'm going to do it again for my embroidery club. So one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to use something I've already created, and you can go back through some of my videos and see it. And I'm going to show you the picture right here on the screen. If I can come up here in the corner, this is my home button where um, all most of your tools are that you're going to use to import. And then you have an image button right next to the home button. and if you if you want to make something into an embroidery, you always come to the image and do an auto punch or do a photo punch. But I can also just bring a picture up. So I'm going to hit home or open, I'm sorry, and then open file. And I'm going to come into my files where my pictures are. And I have a picture of this table runner. And you can go back into some of my videos and see this table runner that I made before. And I actually just wrote the words Halloween across this table runner and I made these little shoes in the um, on the Stellaire sewing machine and then I made this little cauldron in PE design and I'm going to use those images to on my table runner but right in the center I'm going to put a little saying and we're going to do lettering on that so I thought this would be a really good time for me to teach you a little bit about how to do lettering so I'm just going to hit delete to make this picture go away oops Let's go back into image and modify image. If you ever accidentally click off of your picture so that you can't get it again, that's the way that you get it, is you go to image, modify image, and the little boxes will appear, and then you can hit delete, and it'll go away. So before I actually start typing in this little saying that I thought that we would do, I am going to show you just some really basic stuff on, on what you can do with lettering. So I'm gonna go home, and I'm gonna hit text, and I'm gonna click on the screen. And once I click on the screen, it puts, a, and it's hard to see this little dotted line right there, and then it opens up this box over here that says text attributes. And text attributes is where we're gonna make all of our adjustments for our text, and you'll see there's a cursor right here that's flashing. So once I start typing, I'm just gonna type my name, Rosemary, it appears here, and it appears here. And then once I hit enter, then it appears over here as stitches. And I can take the corner. Remember, whenever you rest your mouse on the corner, you get that double arrow. And I can pull it. And I can make it any size I want it to. And it doesn't matter how big I make it. It's, the software is going to allow me to change the size of it because it's created in the software. But you have to take into consideration that if these stitches start getting too big, then they're not going to make a good um embroidery design because your your satin stitches are going to be too big so then you might want to come up here to where it says text now if i deselect the word rosemary that text box disappears i can go home and i have a text box here but that text box just puts more text on the screen it's not going to um, make any adjustments to the one i've already got written if i click on it so that I've got the black boxes around it and it's selected, there's a text button up here. And that one will allow me to change. So right here is where my drop down arrow is. And it's got all my different lettering fonts that are available to me through Brother. And there's about 125 some fonts in here that are Brother and they're tested, 120 actually. And I know that if I click on one of them, they're going to sew out pretty good. Anything below that with a TT on it, that is true type fonts. Those are fonts that are in your computer. I can make an embroidery design just by choosing a true type font, just like that. And it'll make an embroidery design. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to make a good embroidery design because it just is basically taking the font from my computer. So sometimes you got to make some changes on true type fonts, but the brother ones usually come out pretty good. So I'm going to go back to my text button and click on that. And I'm going to pick that one that I had before. 
and that's a pretty good um, font. But the trouble is, like I said before, the the satin stitching is a little too wide, and it probably isn't going to sew out good. So if I go back to my text button again, see right here where it says not sewn, I can change that to a fill just like that. And it'll take a second. And now it's a fill. And now I could probably make it even bigger than that. Now, if I want to make this in two rows, I can come over here and I can click right in the middle between Rose and Mary. And I'm going to hold Control and Enter. And now it just made it into two rows. Um, if I just hit enter there, it's going to just make it into embroidery. So I want to push control enter to do a new row. And then I'm going to push enter again, and it'll turn those into stitches. And since they'd already been made into a fill stitch, they'll stay a, a fill stitch. And I'm going to pull them even bigger. Now I've got pretty big letters here. So what am I probably going to want to do if they're that big is I want to go into my um, text attributes. Sorry about that sewing attributes and I want to click the under sewing box so that there's some under sewing going on underneath these letters because they're really big. The other thing that I might want to do is I might want to put a, a stitch around the outside. So if I go back up here to text see the way it says not sewn right here if i change that to a zigzag stitch it's going to add a border around my letters if it ever gets around to doing it there it is there's a border going around it and it's black so if i hit text again you'll see that there's black thread there um, i can hit that and make it let's make it green I don't know why it's taking so doggone long. I'm going to go home and I'm going to do zoom and I'm going to zoom in really close so you can see that there's a satin stitch going around that whole work. And that's one of the things I love about Brother because it's so easy to add borders and outlines on things. If I wanted that to be um, a running stitch I could do a running stitch I could do a triple stitch I could do a stem stitch and I could do a what they call an EV stitch which is really just a blanket stitch so it looks like I have an applique so you can do a whole lot of things around the outside of your letters if you want to I am going to hit this and zoom all Now, another thing that I can do is if I wanted this first letter to be a little bit different, you see the little triangle right here in the middle? If I click on that one, now I have the opportunity to change just that one. I can move it over like this. I'm sorry, my computer is not cooperating well with me. I can size that, just that one all by itself by pulling on it. And if I wanted to, I could go in, back into my text menu, drop down the arrow here, and let's see, let's go to this gothic. Let's get crazy and make that one. Just the first letter, not any of the rest of it, is going to be changed to gothic. So I just did that. So you could do that and then I could do the text. Since I've still only got the R selected, I can come in here and say let's make that blue and just change that one color. So that's just a little bit of some of the stuff you can do with your lettering. Have a little bit of fun with it.
shows before how you can do a programmable fill. Now over here in your sewing attributes, I can click on this. And I have all these different fills that I can try in here. Let's let's just do this one. See if it say okay. Go home and zoom up really close to this and see how I filled that letter with something different. So you can do a little bit of different things like that. I'll go home and I don't know why I did that. Zoom all. So another thing that I can do if I wanted to is the word every time you select it, you'll notice it selects the whole thing at once. Or you could come in here and you could select the center triangle and just change that one. But let's say I wanted to take a letter out of this. I wanted to put something else in the middle. So what I'd have to do is I want to just change the word rosemary into a shape. So when I um, go in here to the text button where this is at, there's another one right here that says convert to outline. If I hit convert to outline, it's going to convert my letters into a shape now. They're no longer going to be read as letters. They're going to be read as a shape. And this blue dotted line appears around them, which means it's they're grouped together as several different shapes instead of letters. So the first thing I want to do is I want to right click in the middle of this and I want to ungroup it. So that dotted line disappears. Now, not only are they um, no longer letters, but you'll notice over here in the area that now they're reading it because they're reading them like shapes. It has each one of these shapes and then the outline, the shape and then the outline, the shape and then the outline. That's a little bit irritating, but I can kind of fix that. All I have to do is change, hit the color shuffle thing and it'll put it back the way it belongs so that they're all together. Um, but the reason why I showed you that is now that they're shapes instead of letters, if I select just the O, I could pick it up. I could move it to another place. I could delete it completely out of there. And import, oh, see that little outline is still there. Let's put that delete on that one. And then I could import a rose right here and put the a rose right where the O is and do that instead. So that's another thing I can do with my letters. Another thing I could do is let's say I wanted this part of the R to kind of do something really crazy and go up and over the top of this like that. Since this is a shape now instead of a letter, if I go home and I go right here, this is my selector button. Remember, this button will add editing points around that shape. So now, after it thinks about it for a minute, I will see a bunch of little boxes around this. And I can grab one of these boxes and pull and if I click on the line, another box will appear there. Maybe pull it up this way. Pull this up this way.
pull this up this way. <laughs> okay, so you get the idea. I'm sorry that this is moving so slow like this, but um, you can see that you can kind of change the shape of anything that you want to change to make it do what you want it to do. Start out with a font that's in your computer or that's in the software and then adjust it to be what you want it to be um, and make it up what you want. So I am going to delete all of this stuff that I've got all crazy here and I'm going to type in my saying that's going to be on my Halloween quilt. So I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, so I'm back and I have typed in a few things on my screen here. And I want to tell you that I typed these in separately. I did not hit my control enter so that I did an enter button because I want to be able to select them and move them separately. I don't want them all to move together and I haven't quite decided where I'm going to put everything. So it just works out better that way. Um, this just says um, days you just have to just. I want to put the word some here. So I'm going to come back over here to home and I'm going to hit text and hit this and then click right over here in the corner so that I get a cursor and I'm going to write the word S O M E and enter. And the reason why I typed that in separately is I think I want to do that in a different font. I think I want to hit text. I'm definitely going to take this off that I had on there before. It always goes back to whatever you did before. So since I had the um, blanket stitch on there, it went back to that. It went back to the program will fulfill and we'll do satin stitch again. But we'll come up here, hit the down arrow. And let's see, I want to do something. It shows me the word sum so I can know pretty much what it's going to look like according to the font that I chose. Maybe this one. And that's obviously too big, so I'm going to squish it in. This is my sewing um, order, and it's in my way right now, so I'm going to pick it up. I don't want to close it. I just want to get it out of my way. So I, I wrote the word sum. Let's make it a little bit smaller. And maybe stretch it out a little bit. And then let's change it to orange. Let's do orange. I think I'm going to have my background fabric black. So I think orange will work really good. And then the, this one here, I'm going to make a lime green. And I'll change the colors on the rest of these, but I want to add the word shoes over here. So in order to do that, I have to go back home again, pick my text, and click right here where shoes is. And write the word shoes. And I'm going to write it all in capitals. S-H-O-E-S. -E Enter. Let's make it bigger. And drag down so it's longer. Oh, look, I've got it in the wrong place too. It says have to put on the shoes. So there's shoes right there. And then I'm going to go back up here to text and do the drop down. And look for something that looks a 
I was thinking a gothic, but I don't like these gothic ones. I don't think they look good. So let's just see. What does that look like? You'll notice when I push up, it gets shorter, and when I pull this way, it gets fatter. Okay, so I came back, and I'm sorry I went back out while we were trying to put all this together, but my computer is just not cooperating the way I want it to, and it's taking too long. But you can see that I've typed in each one of these. Whoops, what did that do? I didn't want to do that. Um, you can see that um, it that I've typed in each one of these uh, the word some and the days and have to and put on the shoes in different pieces so that I could move them around till I got them the way I wanted, size them, change the fonts, and do a whole lot different things with them. And again, as I showed you before with the word rosemary, I could have put outlines around any of these that I wanted to. I think this came out pretty good the way I want to. But the last thing I'm going to do before I save it to a stick and embroider this out on my little table runner is you'll notice over here that I have the green and then the purple and then the orange and the orange and then the purple and then the per green and the orange and then the purple and that's a pain in the neck. Who wants to sew that out like that? So I'm going to hit this button right here on the top that shuffles the color. So now I've got um, I've got green and then I've got purple and it looks to me like I picked two different color oranges, but that's okay. I'll just sew them out. Um, in the same color, or maybe it, when I get ready to sew it out, I'll decide I want the word shoes to be in a completely different color. I haven't figured that out yet, but at least that'll make it easier for me to sew all of that out. And then I'll do the shoes and the cauldron, and we'll put some buttons on it, and I'll I'll show you how cool that is as we're working on it. But I hope I taught you a little bit about the lettering and the PE design software. I just love it. I think it's easy to use, and it's a lot of fun. And um, so let's go to the sewing machine and let's embroider this out and see what we get, okay? Okay, so I wanted to show you what I've done so far. First thing I have to tell you that I lied. Um, I told you that, um, that I had done an applique uh, tutorial on the PE design and I went back and I looked and I have not done one on that. I did them both on the Stellaire. So I wanted to be able to let you see um, how to do that. So I will do a future video on how to do an applique with the PE design software, but you basically um, have seen a couple of the ones on the Solaire, and that's what I did. I did the shoes and I did the cauldron, and then I did the lettering. So I wanna move the camera so you can get a little bit closer and see exactly what I've accomplished so far. So give me just a second. Okay, so here it is. Um, here's the shoes that we did. And I did change the applique a little bit where I made the bottoms and the heels a little bit different. And I did the um, shoelaces a little bit so that they're more of an applique than just a satin stitch. And, you know, you kind of just do whatever you think is going to look really cute and make your own shoes. And then I here's um, a cauldron that I put here and I put some bubbles and I created some little dots it's really easy to do either in the software or with your Stellaire sewing machine. And I made some little applique dots as well that look like little bubbles floating around. And here's the saying that I did. And I have to confess, I went back and changed it even some more because I had some, you could see I was having problems with my software. Um, so it says some days you have to just put on the shoes to remind them who they're dealing with. So I thought that would be something really fun to do as a table runner for Halloween. And then you can see that I... I just went through my stash. I have a whole bunch of Halloween scraps, especially after, you know, all the mask making and stuff. Uh, I have bunches of little scraps. So I just cut some two and a half inch squares and I sewed them together in strips and I put them on either side of this little table runner. And then I've put some batting behind it and another piece of fabric. And now I'm going to put it on my Solaire sewing machine and I'm going to quilt it. And you've seen me quilt things with my Solaire before, but I'm going to try something a little bit different. I'm going to put kind of like a little circle without an outline and put that the circle fill on it and then do the rest in regular um, stippling probably around the outside. We'll see how it goes. Um, let me get this hooped up and then we'll go from there. and We'll see what we end up doing here. 
Okay, so you can see that I have this on my Stellaire, and I have went ahead and used my app to take a picture of what I have in the hoop. And here's my cauldron right here, and here's the words that I want to kind of put um, some um, quilting around the outside that looks like bubbles. So what I want to do first is I want to come over here, and I want to hit this. And I want to say don't sew because I don't want it to sew this line. I just want to fill it with some quilting. I'm going to say okay. And then I'm going to use my pencil. And I want to make sure that I set the pencil for this one right here. Because this one right here is a kind of like a free motion that I can move. Some of the other ones make straight lines. But I'm going to do a free motion one. And I'm going to say okay. And then I'm just going to take from right here where the end of the cauldron is. And I'm going to draw. And I kind of want this to be just look like a vapor that's coming up out of my cauldron right here. So then what I want to do, you know what, I think I'm going to hit erase. And I'm going to erase this little bit that goes right here because I don't want that to go over the top of my cauldron. But I do need to close this, otherwise it won't um, fill. So I'm going to come back to the pencil and I'm going to just make a line that goes right here. So that's closed and I have kind of a vapor, but I also don't want it to quilt over my words. So this is the part that might get a little bit complicated. I need to kind of go like this. There's the word sum. And mark that off. And it doesn't matter if it's pretty because it's, again, remember, we're not going to sew this. Um, but I do want to get as close to the words as possible. So maybe I want to hit my plus sign and see where I'm at. So I can get right close to the word days. I'm going to move my red box down here so I can just outline this word just. And this might take me a few minutes, but you get the idea of what I'm going to do here. I'm even going to make a line around this circle because I don't want it to get up close to that. And here's the word too. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to um, fast forward through this and then we'll go to the next part. Okay, so I went ahead and I did all of that. Remember, this is an experiment. I haven't tried this out yet. I don't even know if it's going to work, but we're going to give it a try. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this part. This is the outline. This is the fill. So we're going to hit this part right here, and we're going to hit this. Select. And I want these circles is what I want. So I'm going to say OK, and we can do them in red. And then make sure you hit your pour. Always make sure you hit your pour. And then we're going to tap right in the center here. And there's all the little bubbles that I'm going to try and see how they work. Let's hope that that comes out the way I want it to do. And then, um, then I'm going to fill all the background with something else. And I'm not even sure what that's going to be. But we'll go ahead and we'll sew that out and we'll fill the background. I still have to trace around my shoes and my bubbles to make sure that it doesn't sew over the top of that. So let's try this part first. I want to hit, um, I've got my machine all threaded up. Um, let's turn it this way just a little bit so you can see I've got my um, quilt inside of here. And I've got it threaded up. So let's... Hit next, preview, OK. And um, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to sew it out. Let's see what we end up. Oh, look, you know what? Before I hit sew, see the way it outlined? All, I don't want that. I want the bubbles to be without an outline. So let's hit return. And then uh, see right here where it says on? That's the outline button. I want that off. So turn that off and then hit set and preview. Okay. 
see now I don't have outlines around all my letters. I just have little floating bubbles everywhere. So that should work. So let me go ahead and sew that out and I'll let you see what we get end up with at the end. Okay, so I finished the pretty much the table runner. I did the embroidery on the feet and um, and then I went a bit ahead and I did all the quilting on my Stellar sewing machine and you can see that it did a pretty nice job. I have to confess the whole idea of doing the bubbles and everything, you can see the circles in here, but they it didn't really come out the way I thought it would be. You can't really, um, there's no real distinction in them between um, this quilting and the one that looks like little bubbles and everything. But other than that, I think it came out really cute. And then I went ahead and I put all these little buttons on the, um, on the, uh, table runner just to give it a little bit of pop to make it a little more fun looks like there's a whole bunch of little bubbles coming out of my cauldron over here so I think it came out pretty cute hi everybody so I'm back here with the table runner and as I just showed you a second ago it is completely finished except for the binding that goes around the edges and the reason why I haven't put the binding on it yet is because Brother has a brand new walking foot that I want to show you. And I thought maybe I would do it in a different video so that um, people who are looking for walking feet but not necessarily wanting to see software and the Solaire might watch it as well. Uh, so that's why I'm splitting them up. So watch for that next video that I will show you that walking foot and how nice it puts binding on whether it's on your quilt or whether it's on... Um, a little table runner like this. So otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you might have learned just a couple things about the PE Design software, about things you can do with quilting in your Solaire, or maybe just how much fun it is to make a Halloween table runner in June. Isn't that crazy? Um, like and subscribe, make some comments. Otherwise, I hope you have a great summer and we'll see you later. Bye.